Okay, so uh, before that, how many Star Wars fans here? Okay, not as much as I'd like, but today was actually supposed to be the Star Wars release, and uh, I was hoping that you know it would be a theme presentation, uh, but then apparently uh, Dilwale is quite important, so the Star Wars release in India got shifted to 25th, uh, which was not so lucky for me. But uh, that's how I wanted to uh, actually tailor my presentation. But we'll start anyways. And we can watch the video for the talk on 25th. Uh, so yeah, I'm here to talk about beacons, eddy stone, uh, and the physical web. For uh, those of you who don't uh, know any of these terms, beacons, were, beacons are basically small Bluetooth low energy devices. Uh, eddy stone is a specific format of those. And physical web is a strategy that Google is uh, adopting, which uh, encompasses not just eddy stone, but some other stuff too. So we are going to talk about these things. Uh, I'll come back to the demos later. But basically, uh, Eddystone beacons are based off Bluetooth low energy, right? So Bluetooth low energy is this new kind of Bluetooth, which runs on a small coin cell battery for months, if not years, right? So it is very uh, nice to have in a place where you want to just install it and forget about it. It just works. But the problem with Bluetooth is that it's offline, right? And we want everything connected. That's why uh, Apple and uh, Google are trying different things to, you know, encompass this in their mobile strategy somehow so that they can still use Bluetooth but still be connected. The design principles in Bluetooth low energy are different uh, as compared to the old Bluetooth. If you have used the old Bluetooth, uh, you understand, you know, it's more TCP IP than anything else. Uh, this is not like that. This is tailored uh, so that it uh, runs on batteries. That's the main main aim of the design of Bluetooth Low Energy. Okay. Uh, so how it all started is uh, GPS has been great, right? So there are so many apps that are possible today because we have GPS in our phones. Most of the uh, famous apps, right? Take Uber, for example, right? There are so many Uber for X apps, which would not work if there was no GPS. So Apple was wondering what we could do uh, after GPS, right? Once we have something which tells us that we are in a particular building, what can we do next? We need something which tells me what chair I'm sitting on, what floor I am on, what room I'm in, right? So what Apple did was Apple launched a new uh, kind of format, or let's call it a protocol, uh, in 2013, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and they called it the iBeacon. Okay, what did I do? Okay. Ooh. It's, that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> okay, while well, that loads, yeah, so Apple uh, launched this new format called iBeacon, which was basically uh, small Bluetooth beacons uh, uh, placed around in a room uh, which uh, transmit two values, a major and a minor, and then you have a database somewhere which keeps a track of what major and minor values are allotted to a particular room at a particular venue. Right, all of this was great, and people started uh, different startups. Uh, okay, so that's good. Okay, so people started different startups, and you know, started building hardware and apps around iBeacon. And Google uh, took it quite slow. What they decided to do was, uh, they didn't immediately uh, start their own version. Right? Uh, yeah, so they didn't immediately start their own version. They waited for two or three years uh, to see what everyone was doing, and then. This year, they launched their own uh, format, own format for beacons called Eddystone, right? And what they did uh, was pure genius. Instead of transmitting a major and a minor, which are just, you know, random strings, they decided to transmit a URL, right? So imagine this. Each chair in this room has a unique URL, right? 
So uh, sitting here, if I'm the manager for DroidCon or this uh, MLR convention center or something like that, and if you guys have uh, even the Chrome beta browser, I can identify which person is sitting on which seat, which is great information to have if you uh, think about it. Think about this in the context of a restaurant, right? So if you're sitting on a, a table number 15, which, you know, waiters and the stewards use to keep a track of, you know, what table is which, we don't actually get to that information, right? It's only something that they use. Suddenly, we are part of that information. That when I'm sitting on order number 15, uh, sorry, on table number 15, uh, I kind of see that on my app, that I'm on table number 15. And that opens up quite a new uh, range of possibilities. For example, there is this void in between what I eat in a hotel and my virtual presence, like all my Facebook, Google, and Twitter accounts. Right? There is no matching because there is this vacuum in between. Suddenly, because of beacons, I can now correlate those things. So what you do in the physical world, what you exactly do in the physical world, becomes something that can be tracked. And that's exactly what Google is doing with the Eddystone beacons. Right? So they launch it this year, and they bring internet to Bluetooth low energy. Right? Uh, which is strange, right? Because Bluetooth has never been about internet. It's about devices that are around you, and now those devices are somehow connected to the internet. It's an open standard, just like everything, like most of the things that Google does, uh, in contrast to Apple, which was, you know, a closed standard, which works only with iOS devices, blah, blah, blah. This is an open format, and they, you know, all the source code for the standard apps and everything is on GitHub. So, you know, people can just walk up, uh, make their own app, use the same icon that Google is using, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what they did was they introduced uh, something known as UID, so that it is backwards compatible with what Apple did. Right? So Apple was like major and minor, which are two bytes each, and you know, random strings. Okay, we'll have something like that so that all our apps are backwards compatible with what Apple is doing. Plus, we'll have something known as the URL, which everyone is so familiar with, and it has been around for decades, right? And it's a standard, a URL. You can use a URL to transmit a lot of information about something. Plus, it's unique and telemetry. So apart from that, you know, you need diagnostic information. You can't actually be there to collect how many people have used that beacon or stuff like that. So uh, you use the user as a dummy terminal to get diagnostic information about the beacons, right? So the telemetry uh, format can be encoded in a UID or URL. So like after every 10 URL packets, I will send that one telemetry packet which, help, uh, which will help me and Google uh, know about the beacon, the physical health of the beacon, like what's the battery level, how many people has it uh, interacted with, and stuff like that. So what Google next did, once it had URLs in the picture, it started, you know, uh, introducing APIs, because that's what Google does, right? It's a web company. It also does a lot of hardware, but at its heart, is, uh, it's a software company, right? So it needs some way to interact with it. So it started introducing APIs and started building beacon support into existing APIs. So Places API is something that has been around for a while, right? Everyone has used it at one point or time to get, you know, what places are nearby the user and stuff like that. So they added support for beacons in the Places API. Then they added something known as the Proximity Beacon API, which was to deal with these beacons. And then they added uh, Nearby Messages API, which was, which is not just based around Bluetooth, but it's also based around uh, other stuff, right? Like, for example, MDNS. MDNS is something that uh, routers use to broadcast a URL, uh, even if you're not exactly connected to the router yet. Plus, there are some other APIs that have been around uh, that are adopting the Eddystone format, so that, uh, so these are mostly people who make the hardware, right? So for example, Estimote is one. So these are the guys who also have APIs, which help me identify which beacons are mine and which are uh, owned by someone else. Okay, so before that, let's do a small demo. Okay. This is not visible enough, is it? Is this fine? 
Yeah, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I have a couple of beacons here and I, I have an app. Uh, it's an open source app that we wrote for this particular event. Uh, I'm going to start that app. And the app will require the permission of Bluetooth, right? So I'm going to say allow. And uh, this is the map for this convention center, right? So what, uh, so the, I'm trying to show the different possibilities. So what I can have is beacons located at different points in the map. And whenever a user walks by one of those, he gets a notification, right? For example, let's say I want to talk about the exit plan and the fire safety drills. Right? This is something which your building standards have to do, right? Like for example, if you walk outside on the left, there's this uh, huge white flex kind of a thing, which tells what are the things that uh, one has to do in case there's an emergency. So in that case, uh, I have a beacon here, but uh, imagine that it's at the exit uh, door. If I click that, I can have something open up in my app, right? So this will not appear for someone who doesn't need it. So for example, there is an emergency on the first floor, and someone on the fourth floor does not need to know that, uh, okay, there is something going on on the first floor that I, you know, I should be a part of. So for example, a fire safety drill. So in that case, only I can have beacons uh, which will uh, show the map for people in a particular region, right? Apart from that, I can have, uh, URLs, so for example, uh, I want to broadcast something uh, about an artifact. So let's say it's a museum and it's Mona Lisa, right? And I want to basically give the people more information about what Mona Lisa is. So I have a beacon there and when people are walking past, by, they get a notification with a URL. When I click on that URL, it opens a browser or let's say a web view in my app. And then I can show more information about that particular place. Uh, apart from that, okay, so we have, okay, I'll probably show the demos later. Okay, so uh, how do you get started with the, uh, these kind of hardware things? Because this is quite different from what we usually do, right? We usually do, we write apps, we check them on our emulators, we check them on hardware. There is no physical uh, debug process, there is no physical test process, there is no physical development process that happens, right? So if you want to get started uh, building apps uh, with beacons, what I suggest is, you know, uh, the first step is install the FireWeb app, which is an open source app written by Google. It's on GitHub, and uh, you can use one Bluetooth low energy enabled device to install the app and you can use another to act as a beacon, right? So basically you have something which is a phone which is broadcasting a URL and a phone which is listening to that URL. The next step that you can do is, you know, you get at least four uh, developer friendly beacons, for example, something like the HT mode. I'm sending, uh, the four is important because uh, beacons work like GPS, right? So GPS works like there are a couple of satellites. My phone pings those satellites. And depending on the response time from more, three or more satellites, I get information about where I am on planet Earth. Similarly, uh, if there are four beacons in this room, I ping, uh, I, I don't exactly ping, but they ping me, uh, and based on the RSSI values, the signal strength, I calculate where I am in the room. So for calculating that, I need three, but four is better, right? And the last step is, uh, let's say you now have tested uh, using these developer beacons. The next step is getting cheaper beacons which you can mass deploy. And basically, you can incorporate beacons into your existing app or write a new app for that. Uh, so I guess I'm uh, out of time. I actually had a couple of more demos, but I guess I'll just set them up. And if any of you guys are interested, you can just walk by her. I'll be here in, uh, during the lunch and in the lounge room after that. So uh, do you, any of you have questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay, just, yeah. Uh, there is a service called Indoor Atlas, okay. uh, which almost, you know, works on the same uh, concept. You don't even need this hardware at all. Okay. You, uh, ultimately, you, uh, you have to actually map the physical location. Right. Okay. So uh, in Indoor Atlas as well, you just map it, you place it on the uh, on the servers, 
and actually whatever you want to achieve you can do exactly with that yeah, without so, any hardware yeah so i've uh, read a couple of papers about yeah. uh, these but uh, the problem with that is it's not uh, exactly portable so for example uh, consider the fact that i have mapped a room with tables in it yep. and i change the arrangement of the table mm -hmm. i have to remap mm -hmm. it yeah. whereas in this case you know the beacon moves where the table goes something on those lines right okay. plus uh, it's not just about mapping it's about uh, urls too Mm -hmm. Right, connecting it to the web. In this case, what happens? I have to be dependent with some service, which has the map, mm -hmm. and then I mean it's a tie, tied down thing. Whereas if I have something which is you know an open protocol, which makes sense. Obviously, these uh, kind of things make sense where I don't want to install hardware, yeah. which might be in a certain number of places. But you know that's not always very convenient. I mean, there's a lot of maintenance involved in this compared to Eddy Stones. All right, but over here as well, like, you know, let's say you're moving, uh, you assign one beacon to one specific, uh, let's say one table, right? Right. So uh, that's also an additional cost. And if that, uh, even somebody changes that beacon, then what happens? Uh, somebody uh, removes that beacon? Yeah. Yeah, that, those kind of things are always going to be there. Uh, I mean, it's like, my uh, router ke ne utha ke le gaya. Right, I mean, that, that's always a problem. Sure. It's, it's pretty cool, like, you know. Yeah. But yeah, you can think on yeah. that services as well. So it'll probably be a mixture of both these things. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hi. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, so have you seen of or heard of any cases where uh, people have started using beacons or um, Bluetooth LE for in-store assistance on a retail storefront when people are moving by a particular SKU or a kiosk? Then you send a beacon and get them do a particular uh, action. Particularly retail or any public place? In particularly retail because that's I think where target, the commercial target is investing. Target is a huge chain of uh, shopping malls. Mm -hmm. They are investing heavily in beacons. Walmart for sure is. Uh, apart from that, you know, uh, there are some uh, museums which also have some gift store sections which are equipped with uh, beacons. For example, Guggenheim uh, uh, is one example. Uh, then there's this another one in New York, I forget the name, which, which was uh, in the news last week who have installed beacons in their museum. Yeah. So in your opinion, how, how different is this experience compared to having a particular app that provides more information about a particular Yeah, so in the app, so okay, so that's a very good question actually. How different is this from an existing uh, app, right? Yes. Which does not have beacons. So yes. in this case, you don't have to manually select, you don't have to manually input a lot of fields that I want this particular thing in this particular section or something like that. It will understand where you are, it will understand what you want, for example, let's say, and it will directly guide you there. For example, if you are, uh, yeah, again, the Mona Lisa example, right? I'm standing in front of Mona Lisa. I don't want to search for Mona Lisa. I don't want to take a picture of the QR code. I just want my phone to know that I'm already there. Yeah. So that's where beacons come in. Right now, there are obviously many methods. Right? You know, you have NFC, you have QR codes. You have, you know, a text box, simple text box, where you actually type and then you get information. So but then this is, yeah. No, is there any way that you can also capture a, a reaction or an interaction or an engagement when somebody spots a beacon, possibly in the future? Because that would be a... Um, so when I get an, uh, yeah, you can ob actually do that. So what uh, me and a couple of friends are actually doing, we are using standard sensors because these uh, Bluetooth low energy devices, they are, uh, actually have a lot of GPIO pins and stuff like that, right? So for example, a PIR motion sensor, which is also tracking people, and a Bluetooth uh, low energy beacon, which is also transmitting. So I get input as well as output, and then the beacon itself can store information, and it can also broadcast that information. Because the process, the microcontrollers that are actually being used, they are uh, kind of overpowered for just beacons, yeah. right? So they are going to be enabled with a lot of different hardware. Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, is that all? Yeah, I don't think we have time for any more questions. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's lunch time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, just a uh, reminder, we have the app demos and uh, flash talks at 3.30, so if you, 3.20. If you guys are interested, please fill in the form at the registration desk. These are, again, five-minute talks. Uh, ideally, no pitches, no product pitches, but if you want to come and talk about something cool you've built or uh, as an app, or if you want to talk about something that was said during the conference that you have a counter-argument to, things like that, you have, uh, we can give you five minutes. 